This conference will now be recorded. All right. We'll go ahead and call the commissioner's meeting of December 9th to order. Uh, President, we have Commissioner Durbin, Commissioner Eggleston, Chief Clerk, and Matt V and Solicitor Schmidt, along with uh, several guests and Mr. Hearn. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. We're going to dispense with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, but we'll have a brief moment of silence. All right, thank you. Uh, the executive sessions we've had since the last meeting, uh, there's only one official one, and that was on the 7th. It was with the solicitor to discuss pending litigation, uh, and it was directly after the uh, uh, advertised work session. Uh, this morning, we also had a brief meeting with Fiscal Director Eric Kern uh, to talk about the budget narrative. Um, it was his presentation, so not an executive session. And of course, no decisions were made. Correspondence, uh, did I miss any? All right, hearing none. Uh, correspondence, since the last meeting, we got a couple of uh, encouraging letters. Uh, one was from the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency. Uh, they had conducted an audit and our CFA worked um, against their numbers. So uh, good job, fiscal. Uh, and 911 staff. Department of Education also sent us a letter uh, noting an award. Uh, we had previously made public a, an application uh, for the 2020 Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Fund um, proposal, and they said that Warren County was granted $659,697 for renovations at the Warren Public Library. Commissioner Eggleston, I know you were involved in that. Is there anything you wanted to say about it? No, you muted. Thanks. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, um, oh, I hate the internet. Um, so, yeah, the, the library board is incredibly grateful for the uh, for the, the grant from the state, but especially for the local uh, outreach for the the enormous sum of matching funds that were raised. Um, and I would just commend Kelly Knapp and her staff at the library who worked double and triple time in order to accrue the. I believe it's between six hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars, somewhere in there, of matching funds for the entire grant, which I think is just an amazing feat on their part. And I, and I mean, it's unfortunate that it was all done prior to COVID, um, you know, and and that COVID certainly kind of puts a, a, a makes it difficult, I think, for them to move forward in some ways. But uh, just really excited to see the the project take off. I think it's going to be really wonderful for them. And for the community. Good, thank you. All right. At this time, I would ask if uh, anyone that's joining us from the public had a comment that they would like to lodge with the commissioners at this time. Hearing none. Uh, as a reminder, I think it's star six to unmute yourself, correct? Yeah, okay. Last chance. All right. On the agenda today, we have uh, several reappointments, um, a couple of small agreements in, uh, with the Department of State, one with, uh, I believe, Motorola. And then, uh, of course, the big items of discussion will be a CARES Act uh, and the 2021 budget. The minutes from November 25th are in your packet. If you have any uh, edits, comments, what have you, please state them now. Hearing none, I'll ask uh, Mr. Hearn to give a finance and HR update. Uh, you have the uh, finance and HR reports in front of you for November and to date on the 
finance side. Uh, the general fund has 3.9 million in it. The savings account has $650,739 in that account. Uh, I'm waiting on the um, final audit, the draft final audit finally for 19 uh, should supposedly be coming to me by the end of this week uh, from the external auditors. We'll find out if they're on a schedule for that and everything else is uh, proceeding nominally. On the HR report, uh, in November, we had two changes and three separations. The changes, we had Michael Katea on no effective November 9th, going from assistant public defender to chief public defender to annualized rate of 65,000. Uh, Persephone Harkins on November 25th, went from a full-time to a part-time telecommunicator at an hourly rate of 1674. And we had three separations, Heather Lichtenberger on November 5th from the Sheriff's Office, Austin Shetler on November 25th from Tax Assessment, and Don Valerius on the November 26th from the jail. And that's the end of my two reports. Any questions for Eric? Okay, hearing none, thank you. I yield yeah. next to the, um, I'm sorry, was that a interjection? Oh, okay. Uh, next, you'll see the department head reports. We have one from children and youth. Planning and zoning. Of course, they're working really hard right now on the COOP plan, as is public safety. Great update. Uh, department of Public Safety. Uh, Ken, you're on. Is there anything particularly you wanted to highlight? Uh, just particularly, I thought it was of interest, the number of ill person and breathing problem calls that the 911 center um, dispatched over the last month. That's at 111. We also had our third significant uh, wind event this year. Maybe that was the fourth. Correct. Okay, thank you. Finance and admin. Eric, is there anything in there you particularly wanted to hi highlight? Uh, not, no, I do not have anything. Okay. Assessment assessed 100 properties last month. The jail stats are there, and we'll be reviewing those in the prison board meeting. Right. Next on the agenda is a, essentially a proclamation. Uh, we have been in regular communications with um, the CEO of the hospital as well as CEO of the Rouse Estate uh, and through the EOC, other skilled care facilities and such. They have uh, made it so poignantly clear that there are many uh, personnel that work for uh, their agencies that are just overwhelmed with uh, COVID-19 and asked if there was anything that we could do uh, to kind of thank them. And uh, so Pam and I worked on a citation for excellence and service. And this would be uh, essentially a thank you on behalf of the commissioners to all physicians, nursing staff, ancillary staff, et cetera, uh, who um, are working at the agencies in Warren County. It says, whereas the COVID-19 pandemic swept through Warren County, primarily in late 2020, leaving a trail of illness and in some cases death, and whereas the Warren County commissioners declared a you know, disaster emergency due to the pandemic, and whereas hundreds of medical professionals working in local hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, EMS agencies, and related healthcare organizations have put their lives on the line to care for those in our community who have contracted the COVID-19 virus. And whereas physicians, nurses, emergency medical personnel, and ancillary workers go to work each day to care for anyone who needs health care no matter the conditions or diseases, now therefore the commissioners of Warren County commend each and every person that risks their lives and sacrifices their time uh, in compassion to care for our citizens awarded today. So with your uh, blessing, uh, I would like to um, maybe make a quick uh, edit on that, but then uh, get it printed and send it to each of the agencies for a public display as a thank you.
this time I'd ask if either of the commissioners have anything they wanted to add. No, I think that's a, a great idea. And I wish there was something more that we could do. Um, you know, I, given our limited budget and funds, those types of things. Um, if there's something creative that we can think through to do for each one of those facilities, it might be worth, I don't know, something basket of some sort or, you know, something like that would be would be neat. But uh, maybe we can brainstorm that and see what we can come up with. Sure. Bye. Patricia, just, just as a note, we've reached out to the hospital, the Rouse, and we'll reach out to the other facilities about um, putting together a program so that people can donate and fund um, food, snacks, supplies of a personal nature, and other things for healthcare workers and folks in, in the facilities. I, we, I didn't want to talk too much about it because we're still talking to people about it, but the response generally has been very good. So that's something that I think we could follow up as a group about and, and talk uh, so that we can maybe coordinate the, the public, um, like a public direction on trying to support them, especially since the situation there for many of them is so challenging at this time. Right, right. Is that something that we can do through Facebook? Is that what your thoughts are? Well, I think all of that to be determined. Um, there are a couple of nonprofits that I've identified that we could essentially channel it through. But um, the, the idea would be to get something formal together this week so that we can then put that out via Facebook and other channels. So um, it kind of a, a lot of these organizations are getting calls from people asking they want to support the organization but i mean that's a time uh, it takes up time for the administration that's already um, taxed to try to address those concerns so this would be a way to filter it through um, other organizations but to make a, a single stream okay. so yes sort of <laughs> All right, well, either way, uh, the commissioner's office will be independently um, working probably with our chief clerk in order to uh, find additional ways uh, to thank our healthcare workers that are on the front lines. Uh, at this time, I would ask if there is a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion being seconded. Discussion. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next on the agenda uh, is CARES Act. Um, you have before us a list of uh, items. Pam, I'm going to lean on you briefly to um, confirm that this was uh, everything that we walked away yesterday. Yes, okay, as we'll of start walking through them. Um, DAV. Okay, perfect. So uh, the DAV uh, had requested funding. And I think um, we're still trying to get some information about uh, what that would look like. But either way, they are a 501c4, so we're not going to be able to give funding directly through the CARES Act. Uh, therefore, uh, I think the recommendation is that again we uh, table it and uh, not have it on for CARES Act in the future, but instead uh, discuss what the county might do to support the DAV in the future in other ways. Um, we had an application uh, from Clarendon Volunteer Fire Department. Well, actually, I think it may have technically been Sheffield, but uh, either way, um, this is Battalion One, and they had come up with a proposal that we discussed at the last meeting. Uh, about an EMS fly car, and uh, that was approved. Um, just uh, noting that it, um, we finally got the documentation for it. Uh, next thing that we had tabled was to the sound system for the main courtroom. This is uh, COVID eligible largely because uh, we're needing to social distance people in the courtroom. Uh, the barriers and such for um, the plexiglass barriers and such are making it harder to hear and uh, the system is 
antiquated and something that we've kind of wanted to replace for a while. But um, anyway, I, I would open it up now to ask if the commissioners are interested in uh, pursuing that or if you'd like to just table it and similar to DAV, potentially discuss it uh, as part of the budget or just simply lumping it into capital purchases in the new year. Um, personally, I lean towards uh, just passing it now and getting it coming. Um, I speak for myself, I'm, I'm supportive of these three line items. I know that um, this money has to be obligated by the end of the year. Uh, and we do have funds left, particularly since the uh, whole broadband proposal uh, fell by the wayside. So I'm, I'm certainly supportive of each one of these. Okay. Uh, the other one, and I'll also hit on that, is a touch screen for the Youngsville Borough. Uh, this would enable them to have uh, remote meetings uh, more efficiently and effectively than they currently are able to. Um, I believe they've actually already, they're simply asking for reimbursement and that's just shy of $4,000. It certainly fits within the um, uh, municipal uh, pot. New requests we've received, Elder Township uh, requested reimbursement. They primarily bought uh, PPE um, in the amount of $2,487. Uh, this is another announcement. The city of Warren, we had previously approved up to $15,000 for the pilot agreement with Pleasant. Uh, they sent us the invoice for $14,976. Uh, so 24 bucks uh, shy of the max. So again, that's already approved. And then we have several new requests from fire departments. These are not above what was previously allocated. We had previously allocated up to 200,000 for fire departments and this, even with all of these requests, it does not uh, exceed that. Uh, but as has been our custom with the last few, I'm bringing them before the board for review and final sign off. Uh, Starbrick asked for 5,000, Sugar Grove asked for 5,000, Titiute for 5,000, Chef specific to EM class, EMT classes for 1,845, Scandia for 5,000, and Cherry Grove also for 5,000. Um, I repeat that. These were already planned. Uh, they just had not submitted the paperwork and now they have. Uh, the next item is a discussion point, but um, liquid fuels is not uh, CARES Act eligible, much like DAV. Uh, my recommendation is that um, we reserve $17,000 uh, of general fund dollars in order to make the liquid fuels account whole um, due to decreased travel and such in the uh, earlier in the year. The liquid fuels account uh, did not end up getting as much uh, revenue as anticipated, but we have already obligated to uh, support our municipalities with a certain amount, and um, that would not be met if the general fund doesn't uh, make that amount whole. Uh, so again, it's a discussion point, but not something that's CARES Act eligible. Uh, and then finally, a recommendation uh, from fiscal, and I believe all the commissioners are on board with this, is to take any remaining CARES Act money uh, and reimburse the county for eligible wages. Um, so what I'm looking for is a universal motion to approve, um, let's see, I think the Clarendon, well, the battalion one, uh, EMS fly car, the court upgrades, the Youngsville Borough upgrade, excuse me, the, well, yeah, it's an upgrade, uh, the Elder Township reimbursement request, the City of Warren's just announcement, Starbrick, Sugar Grove, Titiute, Sheffield, Scandia, and Cherry Grove uh, expenses, and then to convert all remaining funds in the CARES Act uh, account over to reimburse the county for staff and wages. Now, uh, I wanted to make it clear that the reason we're doing this is twofold. The first is that the um, money must be expended no later than the end of the month. If there's anything left over, it must be sent back to the state and then back to the feds. Uh, actually, I could make it back to the feds, but the, uh, it would have to go back to the state. And um, we're needing to get our uh, final um, uh, applications into the state uh, so that they don't come asking for money. Uh, the other thing is 
we realize now that in the new year we are going to have COVID related expenses. Uh, contact tracing is through the roof. Um, we're having to buy tests. Uh, we're having to buy more PPE and such. Uh, it is becoming increasingly clear that uh, the county will have significant expenses in 2021 related to COVID. And if we can take this money and uh, reimburse ourselves for eligible staff wages, then um, we will be able to free up a little bit of cash in order to help buy that PPE and other necessary things without having to um, revisit the budget uh, or find some other way uh, to raise revenue in order to uh, facilitate those purchases. So that is why I am looking for that motion. Mr. Kafferlin, just to interrupt briefly, do you mind if I share my screen? Because uh, I have the PDF up so that sure. anybody that calls in can kind of see uh, what we're looking at. Just so that everybody's looking at the same thing. There you go. <clears throat> And, I, and it's been cleared uh, with our consultant that the this reimbursement um, is not a problem. That you know it's one of those things that course of action as it relates to CARES funding and it's eligible. Absolutely, um, the time that we would be reimbursing would be for our 911 staff, our emergency management staff time that was spent on COVID. Uh, corrections officers, time, sheriff's deputies, time, et cetera. But we have, um, I think Eric said, a couple million dollars worth of eligible uh, time and expenses, uh, which includes not only payroll, but I believe also the uh, corresponding benefits and such. Um, so if we ended up, uh, say, even taking a half million dollars, if that's what's left, and uh, sort of rerouting it, to reimburse our costs, um, that would free up other funds. And I do anticipate it being in a, about that ballpark range. By the way, the other thing that uh, uh, somehow didn't end up on here was um, uh, the possibility of uh, doing a municipal um, a, a support to Conemago Township, Youngsville, Borough, and the city of Warren. Um, I had a recommendation prepared, but I think similar to these other uh, ideas, we could potentially just uh, help those municipalities in some fashion uh, through uh, general fund dollars rather than um, messing with kind of the compliance of dealing with CARES Act. So I know we had talked about that uh, previously that we wanted to help the municipalities. And what I did do is I got from them uh, their estimated loss for 2020 on earned income tax and local services tax. And I believe I forwarded those emails to you. Um, it wasn't a, as bad as I was braced for for this year, but I think the DCD and all these municipalities, uh, including ourselves, are concerned about next year's revenue and what that might do to the tax base. And I guess my question would be, do we, um, so you're you're proposing not to use CARES Act's money for that, or you're proposing two years use CARES Act's money for that? It was put into the spreadsheet that we um, of CARES Act expenses, but I think it would be cleaner um, since ultimately uh, revenue replacement is not eligible. I think it would be just cleaner if we, took our payroll um, and reimbursed ourselves, and that would, again, free up that general fund dollars uh, to support them in that way. I, I would support that. I, I would definitely do that because I think you're right. 2020, um, you know, was was had some had some downside as it related to revenue shortfall, but I'm certainly sure that 2021 is going to look a lot different and probably potentially a lot worse. So whatever we can shore up uh, to be able to hurt our loins, if you will, so that we can um, support the community, I'm, I'm very supportive of you. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Kaplan, I think 
So this time I'm asking for a motion to approve the uh, Italian One Quartz Youngsville Borough Elder Township Starbuck Sugar Grove Titty Ute Sheffield Scandia Cherry Grove requests and then uh, simultaneously convert all remaining CARES Act funds uh, to reimburse this, the county for eligible staff wages. And do you want to amend your motion to include the courts in Youngsville Borough? I'm sorry that if I'm, I'm sorry that I missed that. Yes, I do. Thank you. But I'm asking for that motion. <laughs> well, you're asking for us to approve the list of items that are under the CARES Act funding request documents and the materials that we received. Affirmative sands, the DAV and liquid fuels. Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Um, so a couple of things. Um, one is that um, even though we're allocating, you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. Um, e even though, I mean, the thing, the big issue is, is the timeline and uh, the best way to handle CARES related stuff between now and the end of the year is what Commissioner Kaplan is, is basically suggesting, which is that we reimburse ourselves. Um, I, that, I think this is why I'll probably be making the suggestion that we hold off on approving the budget for next year, for instance, because I think there's some things that we're going to want to incorporate into that budget. Um, I would also add that it's my perspective that between now and the end of the year, if there's CARES related items, uh, such as like liquid fuels, um, that those, in my opinion, can be easily um, approved by uh, our regular meetings. Um, and, and I think they could still be taken out of CARES money if need be. Uh, to me, this is a matter of reporting um, to DCD. So I, I, I support the issue. I also support the notion of what Commissioner Kaplan is talking about related to uh, supporting the municipalities that have um, police departments and other first responders paid um, that are also entitled to some type of um, re similar reimbursement through this program to what the county is, is going to do in order to facilitate some of these other programs. I think that's it. Oh, okay. and I like as and I'll just the only thing I'll the other thing I'll throw out there is, is is with the budget discussion. I think that's where you deal with the DAV situation and some of the 501c4 questions because I think that once we um, once this money's reimbursed the county, we then can um, maybe allocate it in different programs that could support these. Uh, so do you think that the CARES Act can fund the liquid fuel shortage? Is that what you're saying, Jeff? I missed that. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that that uh, we could we could um, fund liquid fuels via. So for, generally speaking, the we have two point five million dollars worth of liability and and wages and uh, expenses related to COVID that we could re we could have reimbursed ourselves for. Um, instead, we're gonna end up reimbursing ourselves some $600,000, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, and once that money is reimbursed to us, it is then our decision to do what we will with it. I think that we should um, make the liquid fuel situation whole, mostly because um, these townships have budgeted for this money already. We we've allocated it. I realize we're not responsible for how, for the fact that nobody's, the people are not driving and that the revenue isn't there. But uh, I think that it would make a big difference to the bottom line for these townships that are, that, that, that they need this money. They rely heavily on this money. Um, and so my, my point would be to make an allocation just generally. So I, from I strongly the agree with uh, making them whole. We lost you, Ben. It's okay. You can end with the you strongly agree part. 
particularly because uh, not only did the departments, the uh, excuse me, the municipalities. Also Ben, you're cutting oh. out, buddy. Is everything working correctly? We got, we, I got the part. Can you hear me now? Strongly... Yes, I strongly agree. <laughs> uh, the municipalities uh, are not only suffering from, uh, you know, combating COVID, but also their liquid fu fuels funds that came directly from the state were significantly reduced. So not only are they banking on ours, but they've seen reduced revenue from their allocation individually. Um, so that said, uh, it doesn't need to come out of CARES Act. Uh, it can come out of, um, you know, our, we can have that discussion at the next meeting um, along with DAV and uh, the municipalities. The goal, I think, today is to wipe out anything in the CARES Act account and in that way um, we can um, deal with kind of one-off situations as we need to in the future uh, through county general fund dollars so pam i think what i'm hearing from this discussion is that for the next meeting uh, under new business let's put um i don't want to call it a grant to the municipalities but uh, so i guess we'll call it support for the liquid fuel support for uh the other municipalities, the city, Youngsville, and uh, Conewongo. And then um, also let's let's keep on as old business that uh, DAV request. I'm sorry if I cut anybody off. Did, if, if I did, jump. I will get those added for the meeting in two weeks. Okay. All right, is there any more discussion pertaining to the CARES Act? I believe the motion is state stands. Sorry, to, um, so to go along with Pam adding those things in two weeks, can we, do we have a work session on Monday um, or even perhaps the following Monday where we can maybe circulate some things related to this that are ended, you know, that we're trying to close out at the end of the year and then deliberate on those there? In anticipation of that following meeting, we definitely have a work session on the twenty-first. A work session on the twenty-first. Okay. Maybe maybe that would be the way to do it. Is just that we could put stuff together, review it, and then on the twenty-first discuss it in anticipation of the final budget okay. meeting or the final commissioners meeting. Good. Sounds good. All right. Then back to the motion uh, at hand. The CARES Act, uh, the original motion is stated, this uh, still stands. So all those in favor of it, please state aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, the next thing I have, bear with me, is the, um, I'm operating off the computer and trying to scroll down to where I need to be. Next on the agenda, I have uh, appointments to the Planning Commission. Pam, I apologize. I don't, I don't have that pulled up. Could you uh, list the names? They are looking to reappoint Jacob Pangborn to the Warren County Planning Commission for a four-year term beginning January 2021 and expiring December 2024. Do you want to do these all in one? Sure. That's a good idea. Uh, the reappointment of Gary Wareham to the Warren County Planning Commission for a four-year term beginning January 2021, expiring December 31st, 2024. Reappointment of Patrick Saladay to the Warren County Zoning Hearing Board for a five-year term beginning January 2021, ending December 2025. The reappointment of Phil Gilbert to the Warren County Redevelopment Authority for a five-year term uh, for January 2021, ending December 2025. Very good. Any questions? 
Not I'd ask for a motion to approve the appointment, says Pam Ray. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Please state aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next is a Department of uh, State application for CARES Act grant funds. Uh, the state has essentially offered to um, reimburse the county for our increased um, postage costs related to sending out ballots and such. Uh, the agreement before us uh, just, I think they wouldn't, have, they gave us a short term deadline of uh, getting it on back to them, um, I believe tomorrow. Uh, so I quickly threw it on here, uh, despite our, despite the fact that we didn't talk about it on Monday. Um, again, this is a grant where they're going to be giving us money. So I didn't think that you'd have any objection to that. Um, I asked for a motion to approve the grant agreement. I'll make that motion. This is for the grant funds for $3,278. Sounds right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a second? Oh, I'll second. Which made a second in discussion. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Always Next happy, is the radio. Always happy to support somebody giving us money. Yeah, <laughs> right. Radio use agreement, I don't believe the final verbiage uh, got to Pam in time in order to get this on the agenda. Um, so we'll need to kick this to the next meeting. Uh, radio use agreement is simply this. The county uh, owns the P25 radios. We've given them out to the departments to use and um, just wanted to be very clear about uh, certain things such as if it's damaged, what happens, uh, point would they get ownership of it, who maintains them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the solicitor is working with the Department of uh, Safety in order to hammer that out. I do anticipate getting it done uh, for the next meeting. We have had the radios out for months now, so this will be a high priority. Next is a radio maintenance agreement. Ben, that and, uh, is, has been completed. Oh, it, it is on here? Yes. It's right under the radio use agreement. I must be. We're talking about the radio system maintenance agreement or the radio use agreement. The use agreement did not get here. The maintenance oh, okay. agreement edits ah. were made. It was reviewed yep. by Nathaniel. So That's we are good. To pass it. Yeah, I'm saying the radio use agreement is not on here, but the radio maintenance agreement is. That's what I'm going to describe now, um, unless Director Corson is still on and I don't see him on. So, um, uh, actually, did you want to describe it? You're muted. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this agreement would be between Warren County and um, Capital Area Communications in order to maintain our portion of the system. Um, this was planned, it's just a matter of uh, its formality. And it is budgeted quarterly payments uh, for $5,000, which by the way is actually an, uh, what we paid the last vendor for the old system. So um, this is one of those cost savings that we anticipated getting with the new system. So this is, we're entering this the last day of 2020, but it's actually for the calendar year 2021. Is that correct? Attorney Schmidt would have to answer that. I can't seem to pull it up, but. Okay. Uh, yep, I see it. I, I have the term here. Yep. Then we put this in the 2021 budget, right? Yeah, okay. this this amount's always in our budget, always in the professional services uh, budget for Department of Public Safety. Just decreased a little. 
Can I have a motion to approve the radio maintenance agreement? Sure, I'll make that motion. A second. Motion made a second. A discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next is the budget amendments. Now, Commissioner Eggleston already said that he was interested in uh, tabling to the next meeting. So originally I was going to turn it over to Mr. Hearn in order to present, but if the majority of the board is not interested in voting on it today, then we can dispense with that. So what uh, is the will of the body? So I'd, I'd make a motion to table the budget vote until the next meeting on the 23rd, I believe. Motion to table. Is there a second? I'm fine with that. We feel that we need a little bit more time to review it in detail and make sure we understand any of the variances. Well, and, and I would just I, I would just state for anybody who's you know who's concerned about the budget or whatever that you know as of today the information we have is that the budget is balanced. There's no tax increase, so it's not a matter of trying to figure out ways to uh at least at this point to fiddle with things it's more of um with the cares act money being accrued from my position there i mean aside from the change the, the fact that you know we might want to look at things you know with as close a lens as possible i think that we're going to have to make allocations in that budget or i'd like to at least have the time to review that um for that for portion that money for for things so uh, I'm not prepared at this time to do that. So yeah, I guess that's my, that's my biggest reason for waiting. I guess my thought would be that um, I, I, in my mind, the 2021 budget stands on its own. Um, and then we have these reimbursements that are separate, that sits separately. And then we discuss the allocation of those. But I, I wouldn't want us to start putting those allocations in the 2021 budget, particularly if we're gonna be using reimbursed dollars for other things, because we're not sure exactly what's gonna happen. You know, that's that's my only concern. So those are just my personal thoughts. I think, you know, um, I, I personally would like to, I'm good with where we stand with 2021. I appreciate the fact that we found savings uh, to support any increases, um, and Eric, you know, kudos to you for being able to do that and uh, having another year without a tax increase. Yeah, I think I think my issue is, is that um, you know, the, in order to spend money, technically we need to budget it, uh, so we have to change line items in the budget to allocate them to use them for one thing or another. So the idea of like say taking a whole chunk of money and just saying we're just going to put it in savings and then we'll use it as needed uh, technically we're, we should not be doing that so my point is, is even if we were going to say um, we we're going to do a line item for COVID related expenses or something else we should incorporate that into the budget like um, you know it's not it's not a separate it's not separate well, I mean, I think that's what contingency is for. I I think that I think that we should review the concept of contingency, just generally speaking, um, and the legality of it, and then at the same time, just you know, like I said, have to. And I'm not saying that we that we have to or do don't have to allocate anything. I'm just saying that if we're gonna if we're going to do anything, we need to, we should deliberate on it and then make a decision. All right. Well, I've um, made an exception here. Uh, technically, a motion to table is non debatable, which means we have to stop talking about it. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want to keep discussing it, I, I think I'd like to have the ta motion to table withdrawn. If you do want to continue, or if you don't want to continue to discuss, if you just want to table it, then I would call on that vote. 
my preference would be to table it. I think I need to do some of my own personal research. Okay. In that case, made and seconded to table. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Um, carries. Will be the 21 budget on the 23rd. The talk discussion the reimbursement for them or the match for them uh, would also be deferred. Is there any more that needs to be brought before the board? All right. Um, the work session on the 21st is going to be a pretty busy one. I would ask that you do any research that you're going to do uh, related to changes you want to make in the budget and be prepared at that meeting um, to recommend them so that we can write the resolution and take the vote on the 23rd without any issue. Be pretty busy since we're also going to be discussing the um, uh, other that we just uh, deferred that had been CARES Act requests. Any commissioner comments at this time? None here. Commissioner Eggleston? No. Nope. All right. Last chance for any public comment. Hearing none, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. Bye.